We are ready here. Case two. We are Let's go for case two. two. Right? Yes. Room three means okay. case number two. Yes. Uh, on uh, my right side, Dr. Barman, and we have our fellows. Uh, uh, Actually, we can't even recognize with the <laughs> so many masks and caps and so Akash, uh, so Akash and uh, uh, the and uh, yes, so, so all the fellows are there along with our cat lab staff here, Twinkle and uh, my cat lab staff, uh, Vicky and uh, uh, Ashley and so. So we welcome everyone for this uh, live hybrid uh, meeting and uh, let's start with the case number two, which they can show the slide. It's a 45 year old patient end stage renal disease, very bad constrictive seems to be. You see the pericardial constriction in the bottom. Uh, yeah. Can you see the angiogram after the... Okay. Uh, yeah, see this now. See the, the whole question was, patient presented uh, with the uh, pre-op evaluation as class to angina. Uh, before the renal transplant, EF about 50% and uh, MPI was indeterminate. So basically, angiogram was done uh, by a few weeks ago. We see the calcium in the pericardium, issue about the constrictive pericarditis, and look at the calcium in the coronary artery. I would call it is not a severe. It is like a massive calcification. Yeah. Uh, not only in the pericardium, it's actually equally bad into the coronary and severe. Uh, this is the left main, very tortuous LED. Can you appreciate that? And this is the money shot, where you can see very calcific, proximal calcium, but good lumen. Then mid about 50, 60. Uh, then distal area about 90%. You can see there. And then there is a diagonal. So all this very, very calcified. Uh, right coronary is uh, okay. So question was that so this patient has constrictive pericarditis. Patient was brought in. Uh, echo was plus minus. We did a flute challenge and hemodynamics was? It, it showed concordant LV and RV tracing. So, um, so basically nothing from constrictive pericarditis yeah. point of view. And this is all with a CAD with this lesion knowing the patient need transplant. So patient has a surgical consultation because of this calcium. We are not very enthusiastic. Although lab is, Mount Sinai lab is calcific. And this symposium, I thought that we'll soon make it an atherectomy symposium because most majority cases will be done with one kind of atherectomy and other. But uh, this tortuosity, we felt this is a good case. Uh, we do also, despite EF around 50%, it's not a classical less than 35, but 35 to 50, enough data have come in a complex CAD that FDA made approval, approved Impella for these patients with the mild LV dysfunction or near normal LV function in a complexity like this case. If perforation occurs, anything else happens. So it will be a surgical, uh, opening the chest will be very, very difficult. So we need to stabilize uh, this patient and therefore we had done the Impala. Impala basically because of the complex CAD and uh, knowing that the, our options are limited. This is appropriate from the AUK point of view. They can show the slide of the AUK on one side. So we are ready here with that calcium and also it's a large vessel and that is where our algorithm we are trying to put it down. Now we always have a good al algorithm of orbital or rotational. We'll show you those cases today to our audience. But question is where does the IVL comes in? IVL which is recently approved and this is kind of case maybe because of tortuosity maybe just use a small bar followed by IVL for a synergistic. Uh, we call it a and the uh, to rotor tripsy or so. So basically, this is where the we are now. So Roxana, yeah, so uh, you can an amazing take case. Uh, our really, I mean, by we have wired the yeah. we have wired the LED. A little tortuous, but we are able to do it. This is the our the floppy wire, and we are ready with a, a small 1.5 bar. We okay. thought whether we use 1.2 or 1.5, but clearly we wanted 1.5, and we are able to get our fine cross without trouble. If it would have been difficulty, then I would have gone with a 1.25. So, so since ready, you've already started this, Dr. Sharma, uh, and you're moving towards that, uh, while you're doing that, since you've already, your strategy is set up, first of all, um, there is an app for this as well. There's a called a Calcific Aid, which is an app that Dr. Kinney and her team have developed. As you saw, the bifurcate um, and 3D 
uh, app that uh, was used to help with, uh, with those of you who want step-by-step, -step, depending on what the anatomy is. But we have an incredible panel here, and I'll go to John Puskas first. Um, this is a very, very high-risk patient mm -hmm. and stage renal disease, dialysis, okay. going for renal transplant. Would you operate on this patient with a lima to the LAD and diagonal? Well, as you know, uh, renal failure is actually one of the high-risk scenarios in which coronary bypass outperforms PCI in general. On the other hand, it is also a group in which we have more complications, more prolonged length of stay, and more morbidity uh, than in non-dialysis patients. This looks like pretty focal LAD disease. Um, his pericardium would be very hostile. That exactly. right coronary injection, you, sh you saw a crescent of calcium across the lateral aspect of the pericardium on that uh, fluoroscopy. And, and I think that's indicative of what would likely be fusion of the epicardium and pericardium. So that opening that pericardium to get to the LAD can be a two or three hour endeavor. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if this were me as a patient, I would want Dr. Sharma to put a stent in my LED and I would go home, savoring that delusion, which is quite unlikely that I'll ever get a transplant. Um, but I would go home and continue to see. We had a little delusion. difficulty. Thank you, yeah. Did you yeah, hear that, Dr. Sharma? Right? Dr. Puskas wants you to put an LAD, LAD stent. I mean, like, <laughs> write this down this day. Uh, uh, Dr. Dr. Yeah. Puskas agrees with the team approach. Uh, I'll go to, to Holger Thiel. What do you think about the impeller use here? You think it's an overkill? So based on evidence currently, there's no indication to do it with the impeller. So I'm not sure. Um, I, honestly, I haven't seen the um, left ventricular ejection fraction of this patient. Probably this can be done without the impeller, but nevertheless, it probably will give you more, um, yeah, a better feeling in this moment um, if you have the impeller in place. Yeah. And, and I think he's planning to do something with the diagonal too, I'm sure, Dr. Sharma. And I guess that's why you chose a very small burr. I probably would have chosen a 1.75 John how would you uh, how would you proceed with the LAD and would you what do you, what did you think about first rotational versus orbital atherectomy in a case like this well I uh, I for uh, rotational atherectomy when I have very high grade disease I mean yeah, like 90 this is plus hugely percent high grade yeah and or when it's very very long um, so I, I agree with the rotational atherectomy I I think when it's focal like this I do favor 175 because it'll get, eventually get through there. And I've got an impel in place so that even if I have some debris that gives me some LV dysfunction, it'll be well tolerated at that point. It sounds think, like you're good with the impella in place here. Well, Would you have put I an impella? Yeah. For that pro uh, probably not. But I, mm -hmm. I think it's there's nothing wrong with taking that precaution. I don't think you're done, though, yeah, obviously, when you just do a rotoblader. More and more with these large vessels that are heavily calcified. And you can see that this is... You don't need Ivis to tell you that this is 360 degrees of calcium. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to have to do something on top of that. And more and more, we've gone to uh, uh, rotatripsy, to following mm -hmm. this up with uh, with shockwave. Yeah, and um, we're we're going to we're about to launch a randomized trial called Rotacut in our own uh, institution and uh, San Francisco Hospital with Jeff Moses, Dr. Sharma, and Dr. Moses are going to lead this by actually following the rotational atherectomy with cutting balloon versus uh, the standard of care. And I think that's an interesting concept. Dr. Sharma, you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so we'll like to do right now what they're doing is, I mentioned, this is now IVL catheter, 1.5, I mean, I can tell you 1.75 because of proximal tortuosity we're worried about. So we had done the 1.5 bar, we had done any no balloon. And now we are with the IVL catheter. We were waiting whether it will go directly or we need a Godzilla. You can put this through six French patient impella of single hole. We have seven French uh, guide catheter. We can put a six or seven impella. And now we are reaching to the lesion. So question is, this is the IVL catheter. So I know it's a little bulky catheter. Always question comes whether it will go to, I know in the trial, large number of patients. Good. Yep. There were 55 percent required pre-dilatation, but in this case, we had done the rotablation, which are not part of the uh, disrupt CAD3. And now, tell us, uh, uh, Nitin has done some cases yep. with IVL, and tell us what we are doing now. So, um, what after, balloon after it is? So, yeah. so they come in different. The coronary lengths are 12 millimeters. Um, we can go up to go up to a four. Can you come off standby yeah. here? Yeah. How so much? Is 14? Four. Uh, four. 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 Okay. Four atmosphere. Yeah. Okay. 
and then there's the button here. So um, they should show the uh, all yes, animation of the uh, IBL on the phone. Yeah, we have it. We have it all. Yeah. Everything is being shown. So we're going to do, there's um, eight cycles of 10 pulses uh, per catheter. We're running it now. I'm kind of doing it as we talk because I don't want to leave it in this lesion. So that was one. The, the lengths are 12. Now you go up to six atmospheres. Okay. So the pulses are delivered with the balloon at four atmospheres. After the pulses are delivered, we go up to six to see if there's a, the dog boning is released. Still it's still there. So now go down to zero. Zero. Okay. And then go negative. You got to reprep each time because some bubbles can get generated, which will decrease the efficiency of subsequent trains. Okay. Okay. So go back up to um, four. Okay. We are going again. Second. Okay. So it's at four again. We'll deliver. This is our second. And the console is pretty helpful. It, it kind of counts down. So we went from 80 to 70. They can show the console also on one side. Can we bring that to the camera? So it's interesting. You, If you look at the EKG, you can see the capture of the so. sonic impulses. Yeah. It looks like it's a pacing yeah. spike, but it's actually from the... Uh, Mm -hmm. Well, I'm one. someone who doesn't like rotablation a lot because of the no reflow, and I've really been using uh, this a lot. And You've been I've, using I've, this yeah, a lot and impressed. Really, yeah, I've been impressed. Yeah, I heard uh, Dr. Colombo is also a, a fan of lithotripsy these days. Tell us. Uh, I'm a fan in the sense I use it when it's needed, but uh, I, I think uh, the impeller for the no reflow is unbelievable. We had the case... Uh, uh, a month ago, with dramatic no reflow, the fellow was very fast. Uh, even before giving nitride, he put the impeller in in two minutes. The reef no reflow went away totally. Mm -hmm. Amazing. We're right. going to publish yep. this case I, in I, 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 I never I, 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 saw in my I, life a no reflow going away completely. Okay. Completely. Okay. Yeah, and it's it's amazing what we can see angiographically. I don't know if those of you in the back of the room, I know that we put more um, monitors back there for all of you to be able to see. You can almost see the wall pulsating because it's calcific with the lithotripsy. It's yeah. fascinating. You see yeah. the wall pulsating uh, with the ultrasound uh, waves. Uh, very interesting. It's still a little dog bone effect, yeah. yeah the, the other thing I there. would add is that the balloon's a little, the balloon is a little distal, but the um, can you go to four atmospheres? Yeah, we want to pull back a little bit. Or not? Uh, no, this is like, so the 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 yeah. uh, the, uh, the, yeah. the sources are are six millimeters apart, but they're not centered. They're closer to the proximal marker. So there's a two millimeter gap from the marker to the first. Um, blanking on the word of the. Yeah. <laughs> To, to the first uh, point, and then there's four millimeters on the back. Now go up to six. Okay. So that six millimeter segment is not in the middle of the balloon. It's more proximal. Balloon. Okay. It looks good. Yeah. yeah. So let's hear from Bill. Bill, what do you think about uh, this strategy? Yeah, I think I'm probably more of a minimalist than most. Uh, you know, I think uh, I agree with rotaboy or an atherectomy that an impella is one place with a fairly normal EF that I would think about doing that if I was going to rota multiple territories or long zones or left main. I would probably not have used uh, protection in this case. It wouldn't have really entered my mind to use protection yeah. in this case. But I think the combination of the atherectomy and then the lithotripsy afterwards is very effective. We do it quite a bit, and I think it's a nice strategy here. Great. Yes. Do you image these vessels post in a transplant patient? Anyone want to comment on that? I'm surprised we didn't image after the uh, rotoblader, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So. I'll show some yeah. of these cases I mean, later, I get later on today. Case. Yeah. Um, trying to get our devices in. So now let me show you the picture. We saw the rota picture earlier. And now we are after the IVL. Let's see here. But it's almost like magic the way sometimes this melts away just at the four atmospheres with the sonic yeah. application. Yeah. Okay. Put a stand for length after the dial. Can you show us that angio again? I'm sorry. I know you're going in, but... Oh, okay, that's fine. We'll show it, yeah. Good. Good. Right? Yep. Okay, go show that in your... It looks like they did single axis. Did they do that for this case? Did they stick the sheet? Yes, single axis, yeah. yeah. Yep. And, and in... Yeah, this is the one after. So before the rota. So with the rota, just with the 1.5. Uh, this was the lumen here. This is the lumen goes. And the key is that IVL has really made a difference in this combination strategy. We still need, uh, you know, I can tell you without rota, this device would not have gone. So now we have what oh, we have yeah. now. Yeah. 
I'm okay. surprised That's you didn't use a longer yeah. stent to begin with, or have you? No, no, longer we are going to use it. We yeah. have 28. This yeah. is just okay. the yeah. Yeah. This is a balloon now. I would have used longer balloons. That is 100% character of Sana. Okay. If I would have been in the room, I would have selected 3.530. Yeah. I, but that's okay. This is 15. fine. Yeah, let's see. Yeah. Good. So far, so good. What the angle? Do you want to go after that angle? The distal? Yeah, that angle. Uh, after the second dilation. I'm not sure if the balloon's going to go here. Let me just. No, but we had to pull, open there. Yeah, yeah. We had to put a stand there. We haven't dilated this. We yeah. have to not. Okay. So you're going around the bend so now. Really? Yeah. Bend. I mean, of the multiple bands, we are talking about the. Yeah, good. Pull back a little bit. Yeah, yeah good. Yeah. The 28 will be okay. Or 33. It's a pretty long uh, one. 33. Thank you. 33. Yeah, I have a guide zone on standby, please. Yeah, 3.5, 33. Okay. We are using the Zion's uh, Skypoint. Skypoint, Sky the new, <laughs> new. Uh, you know, they keep changing. Every every month, uh, Zion's family, they come with a new. You know, even uh, yeah. in, uh, in our place with such a long lesion, now we will do yeah. IVUS. And if the result is good, the lumen, we will do drug coated balloon and no stent. Oh, wow. No, not, not in our place. Maybe, not a Colombo. Will that not be on the small vessel or even the large vessels? Even in the large vessels. Yep. We have a study wow. been launched soon, 3,000 patients. I don't agree uh -huh. for short stents, but for long stents, I think is interesting. Any comments from Manish and Holger? Manish first, Dr. Patel, and as they're putting in, what do you think about the... the it's a great, I mean, I think it's a, it's amazing result so far because it was so calcified. I, I think, you know, I'm a bit of a minimalist who may not have had the Impala, but it's made it look really easy. I, I do wonder as they come back what the strategy on the diagonal will be. Um, and it'll be interesting to know what the group thinks about the that. diagonal will require a small rotor bar also. That's going to have to pull back here. Yeah, 1.25. It seems, seems pretty calcified and man, yeah. likely needs that therapy. Yeah. So, so and we had to find out that we'll go offline. And I think uh, if Anu is ready in the next case, knowing that we want to be in time, are they about ready there? In the third case, they had done the, uh, retrieve the side branch already. You can pull back a few millimeters. Yeah, longer stand. Uh, yeah. You might need a second good. stand. Yeah. Good. But that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Ready? Okay. 3.5. This is a, see the, with, the, with that tortuosity calcification, this is the sky point. That's a deliverability. Yeah. So um, we're 13 now, minutes for now, this, this transmission. Tell us what's yeah. your next strategy yeah, here. You're gonna of, you're gonna do this. You're gonna yeah. image. Then you're gonna go to the diagonal. Is that right, yeah. Dr. Sharma? Right. So With get the a, same burr. Get a 3.5. Uh, yeah. 15. So what we are going to do is wanted to show you the results here. This is the key. You know where the money is. This is the money shot. And <laughs> we take a picture. Then you go to the next one. And uh, the, yes, so the strategy is very clear. We are going to open. That LED stand a little further uh, with a high, very high pressure, 3.5. And then we come back. Uh, I mean, then we go to the diagonal with a 1.25. Uh, patient is tolerating. Uh, clearly, it was all dependent on how the patient behaved. So far, patient is behaving okay. But they become restless. She had done the money shot already. Beautiful. Very nice. All right. With okay. That complexity we are able to finish here. We'll go to the diagonal in a few minutes. Okay. So the diagonal and should be simpler. Hopefully, here. you just do a rotational roto roto yeah. stent yeah. and you'll be done with that. Uh, let's go to Dr. Kinney.